Hey sketchy friends, it's Taria here from Urban Sketching World and today I'm going to draw a scene from um, Cork in Ireland. really loved this photograph when I saw it. I think you can find it, yeah you definitely can find it on my sketching reference board over on Pinterest if you want to check out this photo and a bunch of other ones that I've just sort of pinned there for future projects that look interesting. I have actually vi visited Cork um, myself anyway but I didn't really have any photos that were as nice as that one so I decided to go with that one and I just what really caught my attention is the beautiful coloured houses in the foreground and then the very beautiful gothic-y looking um, cathedral in the background so I kind of wanted to kind of play with that juxtaposition of these beautiful bright houses um, versus that kind of scary pointy looking church in the background and also the super bright green of the grass in the foreground as well. I did sort of do a rough sketch of this a couple of weeks ago just for fun in my smaller sketchbook and I felt like I made the grass so bright that it kind of almost took away from the brightness of the houses so I'm going to try and avoid that in this one. So I've just kind of um, sketched out the basic shapes in pencil and I wanted to get the basic shapes in just because I wanted to make sure I got the slope of the roofs of the houses down like in a, in a kind of, you know, the way that they're diagonally sloping down. I really wanted to make sure I got that and I also just wanted to make sure that I spaced the houses all right so that I could fit all seven of them that I can see in the photograph. So that's kind of why I went to my pencil really. I think I just used like a B pencil, just a normal B pencil. And now I am back amongst my vast amount of art supplies here. I found that I have a, a 005 spine liner. Um, it's made by a company called Zig. I think I got it in a, what's that company that do the art boxes? Scrawler. I think a few years ago I got it in a box by Scrawler. When I used to um, get those boxes so but yeah it's great it's actually one of the better 005 pens I've used because it actually um, I don't know it seems to still work so that's always good so I thought I'd use that for a change and also I've got both of my what color sets on hand so I've got my St. Peter Spielberg White Knights and my sort of box of random bits and bobs and then I'm just, I've got these three paintbrushes on hand. I don't know what I'm going to use yet, but I've got kind of got them to my, just depending on what what goes on. So I've got the Rosemary & Co. dagger brush. I've got the Escoda um, number 10, which I'm using here. And I've just got a normal art store kind of flat brush. I think it's a half inch flat, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, no real plan for this sketch. I, I kind of, my my rough idea was that I'd do the houses quite tight with a 005 fine liner and, you know, quite like reasonably detailed. And then I'd be quite loose with the painting or at least the painting in the background and the foreground. That was my plan. I wanted to see how I could combine loose elements with tight elements. I'm not sure whether I really achieved that in this sketch to be honest, but I think it's also I think it's an interesting experiment at least. So I thought I would share it with you guys even though there's quite a few things I would do differently if I did this sketch again. Um so here yeah, I'm just loosely kind of doing wet and wet just trying to get that foreground bush in. And here I'm taking the Rosemary and Co dagger brush cuz it's got that nice point and I'm just trying to paint directly in the cathedral in the background. I didn't want to put too much detail in it because it is in the background. So I just kind of wanted to get that kind of sense that it's just looming over these houses. So I did get put a very, very basic rough shape in with the pencil. And now I'm just sort of painting in more details just with the point of this dagger brush. That's what I like about this brush. It can cover larger areas and really smoothly and nicely but it's got that point where you can actually get some details in too so it's a really versatile brush I highly recommend it and I've got a link to it in the uh, in the description below if you guys are interested so now I'm just using the flat brush and just trying to get the paving the edges of the paving in again I was really trying to avoid using any pen in the foreground 
I just wanted the lines to be on those houses. So that's kind of that was my thought process behind this this sketch or this experiment really. I really didn't know how it was gonna go, but I think it's going okay. And again, I'm just using the flat brush for some of the straighter lines in the cathedral in the background. Flat brushes are amazing to get straight lines, so like that is the key I found anyway to get nice straight straightish lines. So now I'm just getting some darker brown on the ground, but uh, um, of like beneath the bush, and just sort of getting in some more darker shades, just to really try and bring out the texture in the bush. Also, it is very much in the foreground so you know foreground elements really should always be quite a lot darker and more intense than the background elements just to kind of get a sen sense of depth so I was trying to bear that in mind every time I was you know coming every time I was applying anything to this sketch I was really trying to bear in mind that I wanted to get in some depth so now I'm using my smaller rosemary and co dagger brush so this is a travel brush um, and yeah, it's the smaller version. I can't quite remember exactly. I think it's an R12. Anyway, I'll link it below if you guys are interested. Also a really fantastic brush. I use this brush so much. Um, it's great for painting in slightly smaller areas. And today I'm actually using a Stillman and Burn sketchbook. It is the soft cover beta um, series. It's got super thick paper, it's white and it's cold press and it's the 8 inch by 10 inch book I believe. So um, yeah I'm really enjoying drawing in this format. I usually stick to A5 which is quite a bit smaller than this. This is more towards an A4 size, it's not quite A4 but it, it's a sort of a different format, it's 8, eight by 10 inches. Um, but yeah it just does allow for just a lot more space obviously. Um, to sketch and stuff so I'm quite enjoying um, playing with this format at the moment. So I'm just painting in the houses and just sort of getting to the closest colours I can with, with what I've got and I think it's sort of come out alright and I'm just putting in those cars that are kind of behind the grass slope. Again not too much detail in them just keeping them pretty basic. I almost kind of just want all the all the focus to be on those colourful houses really and then everything else is just adds to the atmosphere and tells the story of the scene but the houses are where the details at. And I'm just putting a bit of um, a few marks in here with the dagger brush just to indicate a bit of texture of grass because it just seemed a bit flat. And I'm just putting in that um, post, that lamp post or whatever you call it, telegraph pole. And I'm painting in those roofs on the houses, I just wanted to make sure they weren't going to sort of fade in the, to the background too much. So guys, just a quick interlude, not going to spend too much time on this, but I do have an online course available that you can go and check out. Um, the link is in the description below. We go through three different projects step by step in real time so you guys can see my exact process of how I um, created these three sketches which are all done all from photos I've taken on my travels so if you're interested in that please do check out the, the link in the description below uh, for further details. So now I am just going in with my fountain pen this is a Twasabi Eco fountain pen um, and I'm just sort of colouring in the windows colouring in, I don't know if that's the right word, I am, I'm just colouring in the windows black just because I love this style and as you know from maybe seeing some of my other sketches I just really think it can make a sketch pop. I don't do it every single time but only in some instances but I thought for this one it was just really going to make the sketch quite graphic and quite bold and I'm glad I did go for the solid black like this because I think it really works against the bright colours of the houses. And then I noticed on the photo that some of the roofs were a bit darker, they're not all the same colour as each other, so I went in and just adjusted that and then tried to focus on where some of the shadows were, again just to give these houses a bit of depth. So under the windows, under the roofs, always helps to yeah give some depth to the overall sketch. And from here on in it's just sort of twiddling and um, I think I refer to it in my subtitles as faffing really, it's just, you know, just tweaking things until 
you kind of get to the point where you're not certain you've got anything left to do. I forget who it was, but I heard someone say, if you're hovering over your painting with a paintbrush and you're not sure what to do, then that's probably a sign to stop. It might have even been in my video of John Harrison. John Harrison might have said that, my interview with him. That might have been John. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember now, but I thought it's it's good wisdom. Good wisdom. So again, I'm just going in and thickening some lines, sort of a bit of John's influence, really, just making those houses really stand forward. Um, I did use a 005 to draw them, so I think it's um, made a nice contrast to come in with the fountain pen and just make some of the roof lines and stuff thicker just to make them stand forward a bit more and then on the on the right hand side there I added in the tree which I had been missing and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to add it in but then I realized that um, the sky kind of stops in an awkward place and that's the one thing I really don't like about this sketch and it's a bit of a shame but sometimes you've just got to you know it is what it is but and maybe I could adjust it somehow or something but I thought I'd just leave it so yeah, the one thing I'm I'm not keen on on this sketch is the way is the shape of the sky, the way I've painted it. So I do wish I'd kind of made it a bit softer and feathered it out a bit. Do you know what? Now I've done this video and I've sort of shown this sketch to you guys, I might go and play with it because then if I ruin it entirely, then it's not such a big deal. But yeah, I do wish I had done the sky and differently. So. If you guys attempt this, then at least you can see, learn from my mistake and maybe do your sky a bit differently. And now, yeah, I'm just trying to put in some more shadows, add in contrast here and there. And, um, yeah, as my subtitle suggests, know when to stop, really. So I hope this video has been interesting for you guys. I really like how this sketch came out. I love those houses through the middle. Again, the, my only gripe really is the sky and, the, um, and sky shape, but you know, it is what it is. But I do like the effect of doing the detailed houses and then having the church kind of just faintly looming in the background. I was quite happy with how that came out and that was definitely a bit of an experiment. So. I think I'd actually be keen to even have a go at this sketch again and uh, see see what happens next time. But yeah, if you want to have a go at this um, scene, guys, the photograph is um, on my Pinterest sketching reference board, but I will link to it directly below as well. And have fun with it, and I will see you in the next video.